Hello. All right. So we are going to say hi, Claire. Hi. Okay. Say hi, kitten. Yeah. All right. So let me share my screen and we are going to work through our week six lecture. Um, the first thing you guys are going to actually do is um, a couple of budget tabs that we had left over from last time. So tab one and tab two are going to be those budget tabs from before. And then we have three new tabs of time value of money stuff. And so um, the lecture today is going to just be introducing you to that concept. So the idea of time value of money is just that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar a year from now because you'd rather have the money today because then you can invest it and it will grow over time. So the first thing we kind of have to nail down is this concept of interest and how interest will grow on interest on interest on interest. So the concept of compounding interest. So to start off, I kind of want to show you guys just the basic interest formula, the I equals PRT formula, which is the way you probably wrote it in math classes. So principal times rate times time. And so um, as far as in Excel, we're going to call our rate like I for interest rate. And so often we just call it rate also. And then our time is going to be in per. So like the number of payments. But let's go ahead and let's just do I equals PRT. Assume you invest $1,000 at 6% simple interest for three years. So simple interest means that it does not compound on itself. And so that's not normal. Um, normally, normally it would compound on itself and it would just keep growing and growing. But if let's just say that you buy a CD and it's a thousand dollar CD that pays 6% interest, that would be crazy, but good job, um, for three years. And so at the end of each year, put that in sync, please. Uh, no. So at the end of each year, what happens is you pull the interest out and then you wouldn't earn interest on interest. So that would be like a simple interest example. So the formula to do this would be I equals, and you would deposit 1000 times 0.06, for three years. And so if you do that, then your amount of interest would be 1,000 times 0 0.06 times three or $180. So that is called simple interest. And so um, we just use our basic I equals PRT formula. So compound interest is when interest grows on itself. So let's go ahead and do a calculation where we invest $1,000 at 6% for three years. So when we do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put $1,000 into a bank account. And so we do that at the beginning of the year and we're earning interest each year. So I equals PRT. So our principal is 1,000 times 0 0.06 for one year or $60 in interest. So this $60 in interest would get deposited into our account and now we have 1,060. So here's where the compounding part happens. So the next year, when we calculate our interest, we would do 1,060 times 0 0.06 times 1. So 1,060 times 0 0.06 times one year is $63.60. So what I want you to notice is that $60 in interest just earned interest. So now this much interest is earned. So our balance used to be 1,060 we just received an additional 63.60. So now we're at 11.23.60. So the next year I equals, and I would do 11.23.60 times 0 0.06 times one year. And so this time we'll take our 11.23.60 times 0 0.06 and we get $67.42. So this much interest. So we earned interest on the interest on the interest. So 112360 plus 67.42 is 11.9102. So whereas before we earned $180 in interest, this time we earned 191.02. So that extra $11.02 is because we were earning interest on interest on interest. And that's how money grows. So that's a good thing. So this is this concept is called time value of money. So then I wanted to show you guys what it would look like if it compounded semi-annually. 
So semi-annually means twice per year. It can also compound quarterly or monthly. And that's talking about how often they give you the interest so you can begin earning interest on that. So what I did was I started with $1,000 and I decided it earned interest every six months. So I earn interest on June 30, 1231, June 30, 1231, and so on. And I went ahead and did this one for you just because it's a lot of math. But all you would do is you take 1,000 times 0 0.06 times a half a year. Oops, I missed that. There you go. Um, and so you get $30 in interest, which is half a year of interest. So you have 1,030 and you begin earning interest on interest during that first year. So each time I bring the balance down and take it times 6% times a half a year and keep going. And at the end, I earned 1194.06. So you'll notice an extra $3 and four cents. And that's only because it's compounding faster. So if we did monthly, it would be even better. So if we were to do monthly on this, just so you could see what it looks like. So our initial investment is $1,000. And then we would earn interest on 131, 228, 331 and so on. And I don't know if I can drag that down or how that would work. Nope. Okay. And so 430 and um, then 531 and June 30 and 731 and 831. That's not right. And 930 and 1031 and 1130 and 1231. And then we would do that for another year and another year. And you'll see why like the benefit of me like writing it as a formula, because basically what we will do is we'll take a thousand times 0 0.06 times one over 12, because it's just one month out of 12 months. So we'll take that number times 0 0.06 times one divided by 12 plus that number. And then on this cell, let's go ahead and give it a comma. That doesn't seem right. 0.06 times 112, and then add the thousand back. Okay, so what's interest on $1,000 at 6% times one divided by 12? Okay, that is right. And then the next time we would do 1,005 times 0 0.06 times one over 12. So we would do 1,005 times one point or times 0 0.06 times 1 12th plus 1,005. And we get 1,010.03. So each time, don't worry, I'm going to copy and paste down in just a second. So this time I would take this number times 0 0.06 times 1 over 12 plus the original number. And then I would just double click down and it just filled it in all the way down. And at the end, Instead of having 11, what was the other balance? 1191.02, I have 1196.68. So basically, that didn't work. 1196.68 minus 1191.02, I earned an extra $5.66 just because it was compounding more frequently. So add six zeros to this, and we could see that in a business that could be a very beneficial situation. So what I want to do is I want to go back over here and I want to show you guys this 1191.02. So what we basically did here was we took 1,000 times 0 0.06 times 1 to give us 60. And then we did 1,060 times 0 0.06 times 1 to get 6360 and so on. So then I want to show it to you in a different way. So the formula that we are going to use for future value is going to be identified here. So I is the interest rate and N is the number of payments. And so... I think with our original example, when we invested 1,000 for three years at 6% interest, what we really did was took 1,000 times 1.06 1 to get 1,060. So we took 1,000 times 1.06 1 to get 1,060. And then we took 1,060 times 1.06 1 to get 11.2360. And then we did 11.2360 times 1.06 1 to get 11.9102. So a more efficient way to say it would be 1,000 times 1.06 1 times 1.06 1 times 1.06. 1 so if we did that, we'd get 1191.02. So another way to write that 
is 1,000 times 1 1.06 to the third power equals 1191.02. So here is our magical, amazing future value formula that we're going to use for everything. And really what we're looking at is the future value of any sum is going to equal the present value times 1 plus i raised to the n power. So again, what we would do is we would take the initial amount we invested, which was $1,000 times 1.06, because the interest rate is 6%. And then we would need to do a little superscript thing here, the third power, okay? So if you do that in your calculator, all right, so this X to the Y button is the one we're gonna use. So we would do 1.06, x to the y, 3. <laughs> and then take that times 1,000. And you'd get 1191.02. So there are other ways to do it. And I'm going to show you in Excel. But that is one way to do it. So what we're looking at here is 1,000 times 1.06. And if you want to do it in Excel, you would use the little caret thingy, which is shift 6 and to the third power. So we would do equals 1,000 times 1.06 carat thingy, 3. And that formula will give you your answer. So that's how you literally do it with the formula. So the future value, the number you'll have in the future is based on what you have now times 1 plus i raised to carat thingy, the n. Okay, the number of years. So that's the formula way. So another way to do it is to do it in Excel. So if you do it in Excel, you're going to use your F of X button. Now we used this button last week or the week before when we did slope and intercept and RSQ. Um, so now we're going to use it for time value of money. So basically, and this is really small, and so I have to like lean in to be able to see it. So the future value so it happened to be one of my most recent ones because I use this function a lot. But if I hit f of x and it's not in there, then I would just type future value up here and hit go. go. So future value, OK. And then it asks for some items. So my rate is my interest rate. And it even says it here. Rate is the interest rate per period. For example, use 6% divided by 4 for quarterly payments if 6% is your annual rate. So we'll come back to that later. And then in per was three. Now, payment is used if you're going to make multiple payments each period. So this would be if you were putting a thousand in every single month. So every month you were putting in a thousand dollars, then or every year you're putting in a thousand, then you would use the payment because payment is multiple payments. But we have a present value. So the number we have is the present value. And so the present value is in this situation, $1,000. So when I do this and I hit OK, it shows up as red and it really stresses me out. By the way, my formula, I shouldn't have put the thousand here. I should have put present value because that's the thousand dollars that we invested. Um, so again, like when I did this, my number shows up as red and negative. And that's because you would have to put that money in to receive the money out. So basically, if you want your number to be positive, just put a negative sign in front of the thousand. If you try to get back into that cell, like you're like, oh, I want to fix this. And if you just double click, it brings this up and students are like, I don't know what all these commas mean. Hit escape and go hit that F of X button. And so at that point, just drop a negative sign in front of the thousand. And that will help you to get that number to be positive. So PV is the present value or the lump sum amount that a series of future payments is worth now. So um, we're just going to put Negative thousand, that's the money we have now. What will it grow to in the future? That's why I'm using the future value function. So it will grow to 1191.02. So let's go ahead and let's see. And here's like a separate example. It says you assume you plan to buy a new car in five years and you think it will cost you $20,000 at that time. What amount must you invest today? in order to accumulate 20,000 in five years if you earn 8% interest compounded annually. 
Now these interest rates make me smile because if you invest in a bank, you basically get 0.02%, like nothing. So this $20,000, what you want is you want it to grow to this. So this is the future value. So in my function, if future value equals present value times one plus I carrot thingy n raised to the n power, I want it to be 20,000. I do not know the present value because I want, that's what I'm trying to find. What amount must you invest today? So this is the number I'm trying to find times one plus I, my I is 8% and my N is five. So you just plug in all the things that you know and solve for it. So if you were to do that, I know the 20,000 equals, I don't know the present value times 1.08 raised to the fifth power. So then you could divide by 1.08 to the fifth power on both sides to get the PV. So what you'd really actually do is you would take 20,000 divided by 1.8 to the fifth power. So in this example, you would need 13,611.66. So I went ahead and wrote it over here. So if you want present value, you have to divide by one plus I to the N over here to get your answer. So instead, there's also the Excel version, the Excel way to solve for this problem. So if we go over to Excel and we're trying to find this answer. So I'm just like in a blank Excel, just kind of working through some stuff. And I want 20,000 five years from today. How much do I need to invest today to grow to 20,000 if I earn 8% annually. So that was the question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I want to know the present value. So I'm going to use the present value function and my rate will be 8%. My N per, my number of periods is five. And I know my future value is negative 20,000. And I have to put a negative in there to make it work right. So I like to write, write out like what my, my function items are just in the beginning to help you guys out a little bit. So if I hit F of X, I'm looking for the present value. I wanna know what I need to put away today to get it to grow to 20,000. So the 20,000 is in the future. I'm trying to figure out what I need to invest today. So I'm gonna find PV. My rate is 0.08, my N per is five. Do not put anything on the payment. And you ready for bed? Okay, I'll be there in five minutes. Five. Five, got it. Okay, and so negative $20,000. And if I do that, and I have to put the negative in there just to make the number positive. So that number is 13, 6, 11, 66. And so that is a, an easy way to get our answer, but you have to understand the formula to be able to use the function because you need to kind of see like where you're going with. And so what it means is if you put this much money into a bank account. So if today I deposit 13, 6, 11, 66, and I earn interest. So on, so let's say that today is on one, one of 20. And so then on 1231 of 20, I'm going to earn interest. So if this is my interest column and this is my balance, here I'm going to earn interest on that I equals PRT times 0.06 for one year. So my interest will be that. And so then at the end of one year, my balance will be 14, 42836. At the end of the next year, I will earn interest on that times 0 0.08 for one year. And then on 1231 of 22, 1231 of 23, and 1231 of 24. So one, two, three, four, five years. Interest times 0 0.08 for one year. Was it eight? Yeah, okay. And then 
This seems weird. That was a big jump, and that was just a little jump. We'll see what happens. 0 0.08 times 1. Oh, I make that first deposit on 1231.20. So this is 1231.21. So I make that deposit here and then I earn interest. Oh, look in the first year, I only did 6%. I was like, why did it make such a big jump? Okay, so that needs to be 8%. Oh, magic. Whew. Okay, so I just had the wrong rate on the first one. So again, if I were to do this again, I'm gonna earn 8% interest. I had 6% in there, so I'm not sure if you guys saw that. But when I did it initially, this one, I accidentally had 8%. Hi, brother, are you okay? Okay, I will be there. And... Yeah, very good. Okay, I will, excuse you. Okay, 1,088.63, and then you would deposit that into your account and it would be 14,760. And then I can go right here, fat plus, that's fat plus, arrow plus, arrow plus. I want skinny plus, skinny plus, double click and it will bring it down. So I'm just showing you that the formula works. So this is how much it would grow to at the end of five years. So, okay, so let's go ahead and just go back over here and on this line, let's put use PV function and then let's put rate was 8% and per was five and future value equals negative 20,000. So if you deposit that much now at 8% interest, you'll have 20,000 at the end of five years. Okay, so the next idea is looking at um, when you know present value and future value, but you don't know other things. So if you have to back into the I or back into the N. So if you know any three between PV, FV, I, and N, you can back into the other. So suppose a friend wants to borrow $1,000 today and promises to repay you 1,092, Two years from now, so my first bit of advice is don't do it. Okay, that's a bad idea. Um, what is the annual interest rate you'd be agreeing to? So what I want to do is I want to, and if you're using, like if you're doing this at home and you haven't, like you can change this black and it's there, but I'm just going to hit delete and I'm going to do it from scratch. So if future value equals present value times one plus I, raised to the N, then we can put in everything that we know. And the other way I'm going to do it, so whatever's under there, just ignore it, is to use Excel. And I'll show you the Excel function. So we know the future value and we know the present value. The thousand says today. So that means that's the present value. So it's 1,092 equals 1,000 times one plus, I don't know I, raised to the second power. So if I wanted to, I could do this little up thingy too, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to get I by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1,000. And so then I get 1.092 equals 1 plus I squared. And then I need to take the square root of both sides. So if I do that, if I take 1.092, I take the square root, um, I think it's that one, you get 1.045. So 1.045 equals 1 plus i. So then subtract one from each side and 0.045 equals i. So i is four and a half. So that's the answer. And the other way to do it is we can use a function called rate. So the rate 
function will solve for i. So use rate function, and then we'll just put in everything we know. FV equals 1,092, PV equals 1,000, and N per equals um, two. And so one of these two numbers has to be negative in your function to make it work. It doesn't matter which one you make negative, but let's go try that in Excel. So we're gonna use the rate function. So where it says type a brief description, use the rate function, say, okay. So the N per is two, no payment, because it's not multiple times. We'll get there, but not today or not right now. Um, the present value is a thousand. The future value is 1,092. The type, you don't need that yet either, but I'll show you later. So I put in two for the N per, the present value is 1,000, but it will grow to 1,092. Again, one of those two numbers has to be negative for this to work. If you don't make one of them negative, then it can't give you an answer. It just refuses to give you an answer. So this one can be negative or this one can be negative and it'll work either way as long as you make one of the two negative when you use the rate function. So if I hit okay, the interest rate is, and I need it to be more, 0.045, okay? So if I do a percent like that, then I need to increase the decimal so we can see that it's 4.5%, okay? So our answer is 4.5. So that's a good place to stop and I'll pick up with the second half of the lecture in a few minutes. So thank you. Um, stop recording.